I'll tell you the outcome right now is second and one for Indiana Wesleyan. 2.53 to go. Jamison Chester, first carrier of the game. He's always a lively runner, and he picks up uh, exactly what Indiana Wesleyan needed. Gain of three moves the chains. Chester's someone who's not going to go down on first contact. The kid runs very hard whenever he has a chance to get the ball in his hands. He's going to make sure that he takes advantage of every opportunity he gets. And it probably won't be the last carry he gets today with Weems out. So expect to see Chester getting some more carries in this second half. He ran for about 5,000 yards against Trinity International earlier this season. <laughs> Levi Tidwell in motion. Here's a handoff to Williams and Tay. Funny hops across the 50 yard line. They're gonna mark him down a generous spot to the 47. Nice gain by Tay. Second down and short upcoming. Now the Wildcats, or third down and short. Wildcats have drained off a minute o'clock across midfield, but with no timeouts, you, you don't want to be taking too much time because you don't want to be stuck in a position where you're forced to kick a field goal into the wind. And I've seen in pregame warm-ups, Collins putting all of his leg into a 42-yard field goal going south. Barely made it, so his, his range is limited. Second down and three. Stokes looking downfield, might run it. And he is snuffed out by even Jones. Pushed out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Maybe got a yard on the play. Third down and two. And the good news is Stokes was able to get out of bounds, but that won't be good news if they're unable to convert on this third and short. Give the ball back to Taylor with the wind in their favor. This is when we could possibly see one of those long field goals with the wind we've been talking about. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be the moment for it, that's for sure. Williams, been the money back today, and he's down the sideline. A hat trick for Tay Williams. Just what the doctor ordered there. Indiana Wesleyan struggling on offense in recent drives, but able to punch it in. I know it's it, it, it seems like as a running back, you lose your confidence when, yes, you're getting five yards of carry as Williams has all day, but being able to finally break through a big run, a, a 46 yard touchdown run, that's definitely gonna bolster his confidence for not only himself, but the offense as a whole. 46 yards from Tay Williams, and now Ethan Collins looks to add the exclamation point, and he does so. 24-14 with 90 seconds to go here in the first half, and Tay Williams racing to another commercial break. You were saying, uh, Emery Brew, that today is not only auspicious for the occasion of the conference title, but uh, fitting day for Jaquez Carter. Right, he has a chance to break all these single season records, but then also it's his birthday today, so no no better day for Carter to break records when it's also a personal day for you, a day of celebration, and these records I'm sure would just make it one of the more memorable ones he's had. Yeah, Jaquez Carter, the grad student, transferred in to Indiana Weston from a few schools, most recently Missouri State, but what an impact he's had. DePaulis chased by Gardy Paul, gets it away, and it's incomplete. Gardy Paul all over DePaulis. Ryan Wofford was there. DePaulis Isaac Abeo, who has been phenomenal this season. Last week, he had his season-high eight tackles, and he's also the all-time sack leader at Indiana Wesleyan. Put up some big numbers, 17 and a half sacks for Isaac Abeo. And there's still another, at least one more game to go after this one. See the pressure cost here, Gardy Paul ripping through Ryan Wofford. But a good job by DePaulis to throw this one ahead of the line of scrimmage to avoid that grounding penalty. Second and long. It's kept by DePaulis, and he's going to be wrapped up by Wofford after a nice gain of four. That was interesting. We mentioned Gardy Paul and the defensive line for Indiana Wesleyan. One of the reasons that Tay Williams ended up at Indiana Wesleyan was Gardy Paul. They, Tay said that he had, was recruited out of high school to by Malone University. He ended up going to Eastern East Carolina out of the gate, but one of his high school teammates and fellow, well, a Malone alum was Gardy Paul. And when Tay Williams was looking for a new team, Gardy Paul said, hey, we got a spot. Talk to the coaches and brought Tay Williams here. 
Third down and five. DePaulis, nice grab here in the middle of the field up to Demario Williams, his 10th catch of the season. And the freshman from Aurora, Colorado has a first down for the Crusaders. It's a good job by DePaulis sitting in the pocket, delivering the ball on time on a rope. He finds the hole in the zone defense by the Wildcats. And it's a first down for, for Madonna moving the ball up to the 35. But you were mentioning Guardy being kind of like a recruiter in a way for the Wildcats. Guardy has brought a lot of people transferring in to Indiana West, and he's been a pretty valuable recruiter for Coach Langs' team. First and 10 for Madonna. Handoff, all good. Oh, he got stretched out. And who was there? Clayton Mosier, the leading tackler for Indiana Wesleyan. He had 17 of them, too shy of a school record last week. Mosher up to 74 tackles on the year. He's, as, as only a sophomore, Mosher has been a very, very commanding player on the defense, serving as kind of like the quarterback of the defense in, that, in the position he's in. But he's one of the most incredible athletes on, on the entire defensive side for this Wildcats uh, football team. And, he still is at least he still has another two years left in his in his tenure after this one. He's a great track athlete in high school. Went to the nationals after his senior year. Long jump, 23 and feet three inches, which somehow helps you tackle. DePaulis chased, keeps the ball this time, has some running room and a nicely executed slide. About 38 yard line, gain of four. And now they, they mark the ball at the start of the slide. Sometimes that can be confusing. You see a quarterback's, um, a quarterback's backside hit the ground, maybe probably one or two yards further ahead of the slide. But when the slide begins, that's when the officials deem the quarterback has given himself up. And so they'll mark it there. He kind of came up just shy of the 40-yard line, but he began his slide here just across the 35. DePaulis on the out has his leading receiver. Uh, that was Devonte Garrett, the redshirt junior, picked up some decent yardage. Just fourth down, and it looks like they're gonna have to punt. They got five. They needed nine. Good job by the Wildcat defense, allowing a first down, but holding strong on the third down. Yes, you let a completion happen, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter as long as you're behind the six and the team brings the punting unit out. So the Wildcats look to get the ball back. William Stevanovich, the redshirt freshman punter, is busy. He averages seven punts per game and just gets this one away. And it won't be returned. It'll be down about the 28-yard line, and Indiana Wesley will take over for the second time today. First drive went great. Didn't take too long off the clock either. Didn't take too many plays. Indiana Wesley on the season, 35.1 points per game. Overall, 300. Penalties decline. It'll be first and ten. Indiana Wesley. There's Jim Lytle with a UFO in the background, I think. <laughs> yeah, just hovering. Right. At first, you know, you think it might have been the tornado siren that was going off. The the new the noontime tornado siren testing happened, but but yeah, the, the microphone having been issues there. But penalty declined. Wildcats will just take the ball with secure possession of it at their own 27. Carter Stevens peppers the wide to the bottom. Xavier Gordon wide to the top. Xavier or Xander Stokes sends Carter in motion. First and ten. Markel Stevens Peppers got it. One cut back. Down inside the 15-yard line. Gain of 60 yards through the air to the masked man. And that was just a fantastic job. You bring Carter across to move the linebackers and Stokes with a dime down the field. A little of a juggling act there by Stevens Peppers. Holds on to it and moves down inside the 15. Wildcats, after one player, are right where they were to start their previous drive. And they're looking to punch in another one. The Stevens Peppers closing in on 600 yards this season. A big play machine. Here's Tay Williams. Weaves his way across the 10 yard line. Gain of four. And the Wildcats have utilized a lot of that can motion bringing Levi Tidwell in from the slot. Most of the time what that happens is if there's an overhanging player kind of apexing between the slot receiver and the edge of the line of scrimmage, if the, if the, if the defender's inside of Tidwell, Stokes can motion him in so he gets in a better blocking position, but if he stays out, then they'll just let the play go. 
and they've been doing that a lot recently. They've had a lot of success running the ball with it as well. And motion Tidwell out this time. Maybe a little extra room. Blitz shown from the near side. Pop pass to Quez Carter. That equals the receiving record. And there's a touchdown for the birthday boy. Waddling away. Indiana Wesleyan leads 13-0. There's Carter with the waddle celebration there. And quite the fitting, quite the fitting weather elements to do that as well. But another one of those, another example of that pop pass off the motion that he has just, that's just been his bread and butter all year long. And another touchdown for the Wildcats. Extra point ensuing. That's 15 for his career. Receiving, that's number nine. Correction, 14 on for his career. Number nine on the season. And Ethan Collins, after a high snap, knocks it through. And Indiana Wesleyan, two touchdown lead with nine to go here in the first.